Yeah, here's another pro tip. So on big tires, you can really hurt your back. And I, I see people really struggling with this all the time on trying to get these wheels off and on up onto the, up onto the, the studs. Simple trick is, is come down here. And if you don't have a lift, you put your knee down there like that and gently roll the tire up on your leg. Use your leg. Use your leg to move it up and down and then off like this here. I mean, you got to rotate your tires, man. I mean, they're so expensive. It's just incredible how expensive everything is. It's like, you know, you gas goes, get, tires are made out of oil. And they kind of, they're, it's a commodity, you know, could, they kind of fluctuate up and down with the price. And what I've noticed with tires is, you know, gas will like, go, oil will go up, certain amount of barrel, then it'll go down. The tires never go down. It's like it keeps hitting this benchmark going up, up, and up. Like when you're talking about nice, heavy, load range E truck tires, like, you know, these KO2s here, they're $300 a tire. So if you can get an extra 10,000 miles out of them by good, ro uh, good rotation, uh, then it's definitely well worth it. Here's a shop tip for you. So if you use like me, these blue shop towels, right? Uh, come in a roll and you, you know, so you use one and you wipe some grease off of something and you know, you usually just throw it in the trash can, right? Well, what I've started doing is I've just kept a box below my vice here where I spend most of my time working. So the ones that I've used to clean up stuff or have a chemical or something on them, they can still be used again. So rather than th just throw them away, I keep them in this towel and they're perfect for when you have, well, like is my custom spilling oil all over the ground as I always do uh, for situations like this. <laughs> so you don't have to waste a bunch of uh, brand new clean ones. You can kind of throw those old grum grummy ones that would have just been in the landfill uh, and soak up your messes there. Rotating the tires takes about 15 minutes or so and that gives time for the oil to all drain out of the engine. Uh, make sure that we're, our filter's full. Um, and here's a trick. What you want to do is to dip your finger in there. Don't use gr dirty, greasy paws with gravel and stuff on them, but clean hands and coat that uh, rubber seal on there. And that will keep it from galling. It'll help it to seal. Just take a little bit of that new oil and coat that on there. And then we'll take these under and put them in. This is important here. I had to bring the camera off the mothership. Do not, I repeat, do not over tighten your oil filter. It should be hand tightened. Now it's going to be, you know, it's going to be oily and slippery, right? So you can't really get a very good grip on it when it's oily and slippery. So what you want is once it comes up tight on the threads, clean it off. Um, and then as tight as you can get it with, with one hand, if you're a, a weak soy boy, you might want to use two hands, but if you're a normal person, you can use one hand and that should be tight enough. You over tighten that thing, it heats up, it gets tighter. And if you, if you have trouble getting these off, what you can do, I've done in the past, is you can drive a screwdriver or punch through them, um, but it's usually a tight area and you can chisel them off. Sometimes that will tear the canister off, then you have to, well, we won't get into that, but it's, it gets bad. So don't over tighten. With our filter and drain plugged in, let's go ahead and add our oil. Now we're gonna make sure that we add our additive last. Now don't take your fill cap and sit it right there, right? What's gonna happen? Nine times <laughs> out of 10, you're gonna drive off and leave it. A lot of guys do. So put it on the workbench so that you'll see it and like, oh, I gotta put that back on. Also do yourself a favor uh, and get one of these little, uh, these little funnels. These are uh, a dollar or two and they're so nice. And remember when you're pouring your oil, you pour it, pour it with the spout up. Now we're gonna, this requires 5.9 quarts, so it's essentially six quarts. Um, and we're going to put all the oil in first and the additive last. Don't throw these in the trash just yet. We're gonna need these. I'll show you, that's gonna be number 10. Funny story, granddad, of course, I told you I lived through the depression. And the depression, uh, the folks that I have met that lived through depression that are, had, uh, had a profound impact on them. He was, he was very thrifty. Um, one th thing I remember him doing was that he'd change, of course he was a mechanic, so he would change all his own oil. And there's always a little bit of residual in there, right? So he'd built a little deal uh, with a little coffee can. And when he was done with these, uh, he would take them and let them drain um, upside down for 24 hours. And after, I don't know how long it took, but it, after many, many years, I think of oil changes, he would end up with a free quart. <laughs> so I'll, I'll never forget that. I, and I think back on it now, I think, I don't know if granddad was doing himself any favors, you know, is that sitting there 24 hours draining in there? How much dirt and grime and stuff is getting in that oil than going into the engine? Like, I, 
I don't know. That, that's just what he did. Start your engine. You got your keys and your oil plug wasn't right next to it, reminding you that it is indeed where it belongs. I know it sounds dumb, but those things happen. Let it run for a minute or two. That'll circulate everything. Make sure that the oil filter and all that is full and just double check on the dipstick. Some new cars don't have dipsticks any, any longer. So it's really important to measure the amount of oil. You're kind of reliant upon the information center and the computer to tell you. I don't really need these reading glasses. I just wear them because they make me look smart. Number seven, of course, change that air filter. Now, of course, we're changing our oil, what, every 10,000 miles now. We live in the country, drive on a lot of gravel roads, a lot of dust, so that might be a little bit more than you need. If you live in an area that's super clean, um, probably not. But, I mean, it's peace of mind. 10,000, what are you ch changing it? You know, one and a half times a year uh, for the increased fuel economy you're going to get, the peace of mind, um, and go with your factory for, get your factory good, high-quality filters. That's... Uh, it just, they don't cost that much more and they're just, they're just better. There's probably more than a few of you that are saying, nope, I've checked all these boxes off. I do all those things every time I service my car. I'm gonna get you on number nine. Grease your door hinges. Now, according to the manufacturer, they say do it twice annually, twice a year. And you hear them all the time, squeaking, creaking doors, especially live in areas that put chemicals on the doors. What I found to work the best, what I, I use for all squeaky doors and type of things is this DuPont non-stick, it's a dry film lubricant. Yeah, you can put penetrating oil and all that stuff in there and, and then it drips down, it just makes a mess. This stuff's really nice. I use it a lot on dirt bikes and motorcycles. It, um, it goes on, it's clear, it's dry, it lubricates, it bonds to the metal, it's really good. And some of the newer door hinges have, I don't know what it is, it's some sort of a, if it's a plastic or it's a different compound, it's not metallic inside there and I don't know how that reacts to oil. So take your door hinges and just give these a little squirt Top and bottom, little bit, and that'll do it. Another thing you can do, this will really help and make your keys last a lot longer, is give a little squirt in your door locks. Now don't go spraying oil and stuff in there. This is good, just a little bit. This is good because it dries and it's not going to collect dust and dirt. Uh, it's very similar to like the, the dry chain lubes that we use, but just a little bit in there and that will make the keys work a lot better and, and prevent your keys from wearing out. Now that you're off the jack stands and the, you're on the ground, that's when you tighten. Tighten with, the, I mean, it's best to use a torque wrench. I don't have a half inch drive torque wrench, so uh, I just use a flex handle. Uh, tighten those guys up that way. When you're on the jack stands, if you try to tighten it, then it, you know, you have to have someone to hold the brake and it goes around and around, so just do it like that. And no, I'm not going to put aftermarket wheels on there. I get, I get, I get so much, every time I show the van, I get so much grief. Like you need to get those horrible steel wheels off there and put some aftermarket ones. No, I don't, I, I like the, I like the factory look. I like the kind of the government, uh, <laughs> the government look to it. You know, I mean, go ahead. If you want to spend your money on wheels, that's fine. I mean, I, I get it, the whole thing. I'd rather spend my money on... See, when I, was a, when I was young and a fool, I was all about all show and no go. And then after, I don't know, maybe it was mid-40s or so, I start, you just start to get a clue in life. Then you go for go and less show. So go for me is good tires four-wheel drive, Bilstein suspension, things that actually matter, things that actually improve your driving and your capabilities. Aftermarket alloy wheels make no difference at all. Just, it's just, uh, it's just, it appeals to look. So that's, uh, I'm not putting different wheels on. Before you shut the hood, quick glance on the fuels, washer fluid, power steering fluid, automatic transmission fluid, brake fluid, all those type of things you should, on newer cars, you should be able to just have a glance, you can see the levels. And remember, when you're tra testing your automatic transmission fluid, a lot of cars, I think majority of cars, you need to check it while it's running, so the pump is running. So once you've done that, you can close the hood. And number 10, and the hardest part for me, is put your stuff away when you're done. That's why our shops uh, uh, get so messy. You, you ever wonder why it's like you spend a whole weekend getting, you know, getting everything organized and then a month or two later it's a disaster back the way it is again. It's because we don't put things away when we're done with projects. It's easy to look at a project and say, well, I just finished the oil change and I'm done. You're not done. You're not done until everything's put away. So what I do is I uh, save the oil containers, put them in your vise like that, and turn the, the little fill area towards you so you can see how much is in there so you don't overfill and make a mess. Put the oil back in these guys. And there's better oil pens than I have right here. They're easier to drain. 
uh, put the lid on there and put them back into the box, clean them all up, have them nice and clean. Because uh, uh, like for me in my area, my local parts store, they, uh, they'll take you use more oil for free. There's guys that use it and burners and different things and are glad to have it. So, uh, so yeah, just put it back in the case that it came in, seal it up. And then next time you, you go into town, throw that in your truck and then uh, give it to those guys and they'll take care of it. Take your oil filter, take one of your old used up rags, put it in the bottom of the box. It's going to drip a little bit, put that in there like that. You can throw that away, your air filter. There you go. Piece of cake. And finally, is this number 10? Number 10? No, this is a bonus. This video goes to 11. How lucky are you guys? All right, uh, so you're, you're going to have your, your owner's manual. Take a moment and in the back or insert some pages or something and write down what you did in the mileages. You know, I know it's easy to remember, but there's a reason why I do this. And it's not necessarily for me, it, but it's for the next guy. And what I mean by that is that you're not going to have this car forever. It's eventually going to end up in the, in the hands of another guy. And of course, we try to live our, our life by the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. How nice would it be uh, I mean, if you were, uh, if you were uh, uh, starting a young family and, and you didn't have a ton of money and you need to get some transportation for your, vehicle, for your family? I mean, the used car business is seedy and it's, how do you know? I mean, how do you know what's going on? And I mean, you could save for a year to buy something and have the transmission conk out on you because of someone, you know, wasn't upfront or honest with you. So the reason why I keep these records like this, how nice would it be if you find yourself in that situation and the guy hands over, look, here's the book. Uh, here's what I've done. I've kept up on the maintenance. I would not not give you a peace of mind and help you to make a good decision. I, I, do, I, I think it's important, you know, the, the more that I, the closer I get to God and the more he impresses upon things to me, these things that we've been given and, and to be able to be so blessed to be able to, drive, to buy a brand new vehicle, um, don't take them for granted. Um, you are a caretaker of these things and we only receive these things because of God's mercy. It's so funny that the, the, I mean, the irony of folks that are so vehemently opposed to Christianity and opposed to God are the very ones that are benefit uh, from his long-suffering patience and kindness. It's his very breath of life that keeps, keeps them going um, and allows them uh, to curse him to his face. So remember in all things that we're doing, so just do the best you can with your tools, you know, take care of them. And, and, and how, I'll close with this. How would you feel? We've, we've covered this many times. How would you feel if you gave um, your neighbor something um, if you sacrificed, you bought him a brand new lawnmower, um, and then you look out and he, he doesn't wash it and he leaves it outside in the rain. And he doesn't sharpen the blade and he doesn't change the oil. How would you feel about that? How that, how would you feel that he was grateful? Did, would you feel that he ha was showing gratitude? Not that he owes you anything. Um, but the fact that I guess the point that I want to make is that when we don't look after our things and we don't do the best that we can with them, um, I, think it's, um, I think it's offensive to God, um, and I think it shows great disrespect, um, just seems to me. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.